Hello, welcome to Soapbox. I'm the host tonight, uh, James Israel. Tonight we have a great show. I've got my friend and a very interesting guest, Douglas DeSales, here with us. Uh, before we get to that, let me tell you about the sponsors. We have Pieces Pizza by The Slice, including low-fat, vegan, and gluten-free options, as well as a fine selection of beer, wine, and soft drinks. We thank them for keeping us fueled here by supplying us with pizza for the crew. They're at 1309 21st Street in Sacramento. You can phone them at 916-441-1949. And the Humor Times, which bills itself as the world's funniest news source. The monthly political humor magazine is available worldwide by subscription in print and digital format. Their motto is, don't cry about the news, laugh about it with the Humor Times. Cartoons, funny, fake news, videos, and more info can be found at humortimes.com. And be sure to check out the YouTube uh, channel for Soapbox. If you just go to YouTube and put Soapbox Sacramento in the little search box there, you will find it. And we have a lot of our uh, archive um, there that you can watch from uh, past, uh, past shows, which we have some uh, really great ones up there for you. So. My guest tonight is Douglas DeSales, a uh, medical doctor and host of the eclectic weekly public affairs show, Radio Parallax, which aired on KDVS in Davis for about 14 years. Welcome, Douglas. Thank you for having me. You betcha. It's good to be back here. You know, we started out like just 60 feet away down the hall here. That's right. That's what I heard. You, uh, radio. you were actually on the radio here for yeah. how long was that? A couple of years. We, Mr. McMillan and I, my producer and I came down here and Shane Carpenter taught us the ropes just right down the hall. So nice. It's great to be back. And that was what year? Do you 2000. About 2000? 16 okay. years ago. Excellent. And then you went to Davis uh, where... Did you go straight to the Davis Well, oddly station? enough, one of the fellow DJs here, Alicia, thought we should go take a run over at Capitol Public Radio and see what we could do there. So uh -huh. we wound up doing some commentaries, which was a lot of fun. Uh -huh. and, uh, and then found out that at KDVS, they do have an offer where if you donate during their pledge drive, they allow you to have like an hour of programming. Nice. So we took them up on that, and we, and we had the ability here to know how to produce things. And so we went over there with things pre-made and landed a spot. And you were on there for about 14 years up until just recently. Sure was, yes. Uh, we, so, we're still on. We should hasten at the onset right. to point out that we're still on RadioParallax.com. We're still producing original material. But, uh, Is there a podcast on the, yes. on the online? Yes. The obligations of the weekly grind was a bit much for the time being, so we're taking it a little easier, but we'll okay. still produce stuff. All right. Great. Well, it's a great show. Um, You've had me as a guest on there we once have or indeed. twice, so I'm happy to reciprocate and have you here on Soapbox. By the way, that um, Humor Times paper I've seen, yeah. that, it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> I kind of like it. Uh, I happen to be the editor of that, as many of you already know. Um, so, yeah, um, so I'd like to talk to you tonight uh, about the, the guests you've had on this show. He's had some amazing guests, including um, Walter Cronkite. Molly Ivins, Bill Moyers, uh, Daniel Shore, all kinds of uh, really well-known names. It's amazing, really, uh, the people you've had on there. General Chuck Yeager, um, Carol Channing, quite, uh -huh. quite an embarrassment of riches. And <laughs> yeah. They're all there on the website. If people want to go back and listen, I hope they will. All the podcasts? Pretty much from, anyone uh, we've had on is available to be listened to tonight, if anybody so chooses. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. And that's RadioParallax.com. We'll yes. put that on the screen. There yes. it is. Good. Excellent. Um, and um, also, let's see. Oh, you. Uh, so I wanted to mention that uh, on the radio program, you have a radio persona. You call yourself Douglas Everett. Yes, I do. What's the reason for that? It just. Uh, I didn't want people coming like to the a, clinic and going, "Yeah, I heard you on the radio. Man, you're so full of it." I just figured I just would jump, jump over all of that. The clinic, which it's is. It's a rather poor disguise, I must say. We should mention your your. Uh, so you are. A I doctor have worked for years. Yes, I am a medical doctor. I have worked for years in urgent care uh, here in town, out in Roseville, most recently. And I am the proprietor of my own clinic, Doctor's Clinic for Men. Right. And uh, I think we have the uh, website or um, contact info for that, too, we could put up at some point. Okay. Um, so um, would you like to mention more about that right now, or we could get to it later um, about your practice? Let's do a little radio and come back to that, okay. because, you know, I do want to get out there that, as we all know, there's some problems with American medicine, and I sort of see it 
firsthand, and right. we, and it's something we should talk about. Well, uh, I do. I am really excited to talk about your show because uh, it's a it's a great show. The um, Radio Parallax, uh, a lot of variety in it. You have um, interviews. Um, we have Will Durst as a regular guest, also. Will Durst, who we have a, that in common. You you have him in print. We have that's him. Right. We have him verbally. That's right. Um, political satire. You do little kind of things that you make up, We've right? made Little some stuff up skits. and had people pretend they were like, you know, mm -hmm. Donald Trump and various things, which is a lot of fun. And we're going to play a couple uh, of let, the let, clips let's, today. Let's do that clip if we could, if Stephen okay. can cue up the one we have with actor, voice actor Corey Burton. You've probably, you, you've seen him but don't know him on various cartoons and things. He's been a working voice actor for 20 years. Met him in Costa Rica, thought it'd be good if he would come on the show. So we kind of worked out a script that was... Um, we're pretending that we were having a uh, Rocky and Bullwinkle reunion in Frostbite <laughs> Falls, Minnesota, and we had him come on to do um, a few of the voices, which I think we can, if we can cue that one up. All right. Let's listen to some old time radio. He's, he's awfully good. Uh, Hello. Snidely Whiplash? Who wants to know? Well, this is Radio Parallax. Am uh, I good man? If you are calling about those Riverview homes, I will only say that a certain amount of seepage is normal in a basement of that size. Well, actually, sir, we're just calling to chat. And the Attorney General has decided not to prosecute, so I think I shall be left alone if it's all the same with you. Well, s well Mr. Whiplash, it sounds like you're up to your old tricks. Oh, I'm just trying to earn a modest living in the real estate racket. Uh, again, uh, the real estate business. Well, a crooked one, evidently. Can you really tell an honest enterprise from a crooked one? Well, uh, well, sir, often I can't. You see? It's perfect. But listen, if you don't have a subpoena for me, then I really will have to run along. Well, we appreciate your saying hello. Uh, no trouble at all, and um, you wouldn't be looking to buy a home a stone's throw from the levee, would you? Well, not really. A pity. You see, as soon as they throw enough stones, we'll fix the levy. <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> I made a joke. Well, we thank you for that, Mr. Whiplash. Uh, please call me Snidely Von Dial. And if anyone you know is in the market for some riverfront views... We'll, we'll have them call you. Splendid, my good man, splendid. <laughs> and, and please say hello to... Dun <laughs> he is channeling the ghost of Hans Conried there. I mean, it's just, it sounds just like you're watching, you know. That's, that's the magic of That's why radio. he gets paid the big bucks. No, he's, he's a very talented man. It's such a pleasure to have him. And yeah, he played along. We wrote a little script out, and he improvised yeah. on it. He was, was wonderful. Wow. That's great. Well, Fun it's, stuff. Uh, it's really cool, uh, you know, the variety that you brought to the show. Uh, you, you had um, current events, politics, science, technology, history, satire. And as you told the News and Review, uh, whatever else and we And whatever damn we please. damn well please, yeah. <laughs> uh, the News and Review, by the way, called you the most dangerous man in local radio. Yeah, I want to thank Rachel LeBlanc for a, for a wonderful piece she did, uh -huh. Rachel, on that. Uh, yeah. I, I'm not sure why I was the most dangerous man in radio. <laughs> it sounds good, though, right? I mean, it, it sounds good. You know, It's yeah. nice to be in the cover of the News and Review, <laughs> except I looked like Al Capone's younger brother, so it was a little disconcerting. But no, it was, it was, it was a wonderful piece, and I'm gl glad yeah. for it. Also, that Sam McManus and the Bee wrote a nice, nice article, too. Yeah, the SAC News, I think, was 2007. The, the Bee article... Boy, time... Oh, no, the, the Bee article was 2007. SAC News was after that, I think, 2010. Time flies when you're yeah. having fun. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, um, let's see. Let's talk about uh, some of the great guests you've ha managed to get on there. How did you manage to land people like Walter Cronkite? Well, we called up Mr. Cronkite's office in New York. He's like 89 years old, semi-retired, working for National Public Radio. Hmm. Called him one spring and said, you know, if you just ask nicely, you know, yeah. and just say we have a radio program out at the University of California, and, and his secretary said, well, Mr. Cronkite's taking the summer off. You're thinking... Well, he is 88. You know, you don't you don't <laughs> want to push this out too far, you know. But right. but we called back in the fall, and by God, he was you know he was ready, willing, and able. And so we got a little clip, which which I think we have in the booth. We may want to. Oh, okay. Um, let, let's 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 hear it, Walter Cronkite, if we can. All right. Mr. Cronkite, we we have many fine quotes from you that we're going to place in this program, but but we confess that our favorite quote. Is about you coming from your wife Betsy a few years back. Mm -hmm. 
I'd like to put that in the show where this, this is such I, a great I, I quote. I think She's, I know where this one's going. Yes. Er, Errol Flynn died on a 70-foot boat with a 17-year-old girl. Walter's always wanted to go that way, but he's going to have to settle for a 17-footer with a 70-year-old. I'm, I'm afraid that's an exact quotation. That's exactly <laughs> what she said to me uh, with uh, that kind of happy smile she had when she pinned me to the wall. <laughs> well, w would you please give your wife, Betsy, our best, sir? I certainly shall, and she will appreciate it for coming from such a distinguished group as yours. Walter Cronkite, thank you so much for taking the time to join our Northern California listeners here on Radio Parallax. Uh, I hope I've satisfied you in the time we've had. You certainly have. Okay, great. All righty. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. I mean, it's so That's funny. Like, but I heard that quote from his wife, uh, wife Betsy, and thought, if we ever get a chance to interview him, I'm going to ask him about that. So we <laughs> closed with it. It was he got a big laugh. How long of an interview did you do with him? Uh, we got like 25 minutes, something like nice. that. You know, he's very giving of his time. Was that little sound thing at the end? Was that from the, his? That's how news? they. End, that's how they used to end CBS yeah, News. Yeah, that was yeah. you know they used to Beethoven's right. whatever it is right. ninth. I don't know. Well, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to have to go back and listen to that podcast. That's please do very interesting. Um, <clears throat> how about some of these other guests? Molly Ivins? She was a hoot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's quite, quite a humorous. She was funny. The late Molly Ivins. She yeah. was just a real curmudgeon. She was just, she would take a very funny view of Texas politics. Mm -hmm. and she was. And politics in general, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, didn't she? Mm -hmm. She delved into. And she knew uh, what national. Parallax was. She goes, oh, I love that name. Uh -huh. Because it's, you know, the two eyes see a different view of the world. And Did you ever have Jim Hightower on? We never did have Jim Hightower on. Yeah. They were good buddies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Bill Moyers. Moyers. He's, he's usually, usually the one doing the interviewing. Yeah, he's, you know, he's, my God, he's been back since the 60s or 70s, I guess. He was, yeah. a, he was a young guy brought to, uh, brought to Washington by Lyndon Johnson. He was a very talented aide of his, and so he was part of the Johnson administration and then right. later, mm -hmm. later moved into, a, into radio and TV. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I mean, my God, how many interviews has Bill Moyers done over yeah. the years? It was great to be able to... Yeah. Ask him questions. And he was so so great at it. What a great show. It's, are they still? Is he still? He keeps retiring. But yeah, he, he keeps, keeps retiring, coming out of retirement. Back, but he he so decides sure. he doesn't like retirement, so <laughs> next thing you know, he's back on the air again. So Which I don't is, know. I don't know whether he's off or on right now. Yeah, it's lucky for us that he keeps coming back. I think so. Um, Joseph Wilson, who is the husband of uh, outed CIA agent yeah. Valerie Plain. Yeah, I mean, we've got a lot of people that'll ask for us. My, one of the guys that's you know Don Rose does a lot of voices for us. He was he lives in L.A. And he walks in the Museum of Modern Art, and there's Wilson, right, as this whole thing is breaking with his wife being outed by the Bush administration. And he walked up and said, would you mind appearing on a friend of mine's radio show? And he goes, he gets out the clipboard and writes out, yeah, have him call me. <laughs> so wow. we called him and said, look, we're not CNN, but we'd like to have you. And he called back <laughs> and said, I like the CNN part. So, so he gave us. So we actually had him on a couple times. So this was right it was right after as the whole thing story was, it was right as it was in the national news, wow. the whole thing was breaking about wow. his wife and being outed and... Scooter that's, Libby and Dick Cheney and who, who outed him and, you know, who outed his wife. And that's quite the get for you to be uh, yeah. right in the middle of that. And yeah. so is that what you talked about, the whole... Oh, yeah. yeah. We talked about that, talked a little bit about Iraq, because he was the guy there in the first Gulf War, you know, when, right. when, when they... Long story. But. So for people who don't remember, uh, he, he came out with uh, basically exposing the lie that... The uranium. Yes, Bush put in his in his um, State of the Union address some things that were not true. Right. Yellow cake uranium coming out of Africa. Exactly. And Wilson had been sent uh, to go investigate that very claim, and he just said that's this is not true, and and they know it's not true, and so in retaliation for telling the truth of the public, they they outed his wife, who was a CIA, CIA counterterrorism agent. expert, which is you know. And Not she was involved with, at the moment, I mean, she had things going on, and that endangered the people she was working with in the Middle East, from well, what I read. Well, administrations tend to get very huffy when, when people are yeah. outed, you know, yeah. and talk about lives being lost. But so it's like it's kind of unusual that the very people at the top were doing the outing in this yeah. particular instance. Right. Just really bad. Really bad. Um, so let's see. Uh, what other memorable guests would you like oh, to? Oh my! There's so many. About. We had there, Freeman there Dyson talking about, you know, he's a futurist. Uh, Enrico Fermi once called him, you know, the most promising young man he'd seen. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, hell of a guy. General Chuck Yeager, he was very giving of his time. We had, we talked to Senator Gene McCarthy. 
uh -huh. changed history back in 68 when he challenged Johnson. Right. Uh, at one point when I was at Cap Radio, we had Senator George McGovern, followed by Daniel Shore, followed by Bill Turner, who, who'd figured out who Deep Throat was back in the 70s. And that mm -hmm. was, was kind of our Watergate special. But, uh -huh. you know, nice. It was funny to hear McGovern saying, yeah, you know, I don't think Nixon was that bad. I wish he was president now. He's better than the guy we got, <laughs> which was W, which was kind of like, wow, Yeah. this is McGovern well, talking. Well, it's amazing to think, too, of, uh, uh, you know, Richard Nixon running as a Republican today would probably be run out of the party because he's just not far Republican right Republican in name only. Yeah. yeah he's he's yeah. way too liberal. Yeah. With the, what, with the uh, environmental? Environmental protection? What's he yeah. thinking? You know? <laughs> exactly. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Health care. You know, he tried to advance that. Um, science fiction author uh, Ray Bradbury you had. Yeah, another, another friend of mine in L.A., yeah. uh, Bruce Bronstein, he said, would you like to do Bradbury? And I'm like, well, yeah, you bet. You know, he goes, I think I can set it up. So he, we talked to his people, and we, we actually flew down there mm. to go to his house, which was oh, quite nice. an adventure, you know, oh, yeah. the little animated dinosaurs around and all uh -huh. kinds. You can imagine what Ray Bradbury's house might look like, and that's yeah. what it looked like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and actually, I probably think the greatest moment we had in radio was leaving Bradbury's house to drive across town to, to the radio legend um, Norman Corwin. Hmm. Because those guys were buddies since the 40s. And Corwin is like, anyone who knows the history of radio, that's a familiar name. He was mm -hmm. really a giant back in the 40s. Mm -hmm. So we were able to say, you know, we're going to go talk to, to Norman Corwin. And Bradbury's like, oh, my God, tell, <laughs> tell Norman I love him. You know, I just, you know, he tells this story about how he was a young guy, young writer, and he wrote to this big radio guy, Corwin, and Corwin says, I'm going to take you to dinner. Hmm. You know, he was so grateful. And so we went over and gave a little recording we had to, to, to Corwin. We brought this up. He goes, man, I'm still getting mileage out of that dinner. That was 1948. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, so another thing I wanted to talk to you about now, you, you have a reputation for uh, some rather excellent retention skills. Um, in this article in the, in the B, uh, your friend and, and uh, the producer for the show, your show, uh, Paul Melalu, uh -huh. recalled uh, a story where his older brother, which was your old college buddy, opened up a trivia book and started quizzing you, and he said, okay, Doug, name uh, the losing vice, vice presidential candidates from day one to present. And uh, you paused only a second and then slowly repeated the correct names in order. Yeah, I missed this one I differ in our recall of this particular <laughs> incident. I, I, I think I had beginner's luck in the early days, but you know, I really uh -huh. can't tell you all the losing vice. I can tell you who won any given election, and I can tell you who the presidents were in the order, but. I'm not sure I can do that. Okay, because that sounded pretty, pretty amazing to me. Although, even to go back and name the losing vice presidential candidates for God, I don't know. I don't think I could go back very far at all. Um, the losing last time it was William Miller, 1964, Barry Goldwater. <laughs> His daughter now has a radio okay. show. Yeah, there's a few. Yeah. All right. Wow. Um, but you're you're uh, you're good at uh, the trivia, and you actually won. Seventeen hundred dollars from. Um, I did go and win Ben Stein's money. Ben yes. Stein's money. Yes, that's yes, right. Yes, I did. But I didn't beat Ben, so I don't consider that a victory. You know. Oh, wow. Jimmy Kimmel read the questions in a in a in a peculiar manner, and I'm going to just blame him for it. Okay. Okay. Well, that's, you know, he's a good guy to blame. I think. I think so. Um, so, let's see. We have one more audio clip, right? Do we want to? We have another Go clip. To that? We can we can do that. Uh, yes, another another trip down to L.A. after Norman Lloyd, age 100. L.A. named Norman Lloyd Day a couple of years ago. He's still working at age 100. Wow. He worked with Orson Welles with the Mercury Theater. He worked with Alfred Hitchcock, and we we went down to Musso Frank's Grill in Hollywood, and talked about some things. I think the clip we have is where he's describing working in the movie Limelight, the only time Buster Keaton and Charlie Chaplin are in the same movie. Okay. And he was there, and I think he's got a little little story about that. Okay. Yes, he drove people a little bit nuts in how he would direct. My understanding is that he would tell people exactly how to do it, and then you were supposed to imitate the, his example. Not in every instance. I think it's fair to say that when he directed Nigel Bruce and myself, he was, we were very free. We were able to do it. When he directed Sidney, his son, and Claire Bloom, it was... It was what you described. He wanted it a certain way, and that's the way it was going to be. So he learned that Marlon Brando didn't take, take to that style very, very well. He wanted to... Uh... I visited that set in London, uh -huh. and Marlon took me aside at some point 
and said, I don't get his message. That was easy to see in the work of the two men. I, I understand that uh, people would ask Hitchcock, we used this quote on our show last week, that they would ask him, what's my motivation? And he would say, your paycheck. Uh, who said that? Hitchcock, supposedly. <laughs> well, the story I know is he was directing a, an actor in a picture, one of his pictures. The actor was a major star. And at some point, Hitch told the actor to sit down. And uh, the actor who was versed in the actor studio method, Stanislavski method, said, why do I sit at that point? And Hitchcock said, to put your ass in the seat of the chair. <laughs> That's being a director. That was the first one I hope will be several. I can't believe how lucky we've been to talk to Norman Lloyd, talking about working with Charlie Chaplin, Buster Keaton, mentioning Marlon Brando, Alfred Hitchcock. It's just that's a rare privilege. That's great radio. Radioparallax.com, where you can go uh, and listen to the archives of uh, Douglas's show, which All those he's clips been doing in their entirety. for 14 years. Some great stuff. So um, you are a physician and. Uh, Wanted to talk to you a little bit about that. You have a clinic in Roseville, is it? I have a clinic on Auburn Boulevard, a uh, doctor's clinic for men. It's almost like what I do is I treat erectile dysfunction. You can fill in your own joke here <laughs> at your discretion, but no, that's what we do. And it's, never do it's, that. it's no laughing matter to the guys that have it. Yeah. And I can tell you that I don't want to criticize my Sacramento, fellow Sacramento physicians because it's not treated well anywhere in the country. And, mm -hmm. you know, you go, to, you go to your doc and you say, I've got this problem. And they're like, eh, well, here's your Cialis, just you know, go away. Yeah. It's not going to kill you. Yeah. And it's, it's given a very low priority on this account. And um, it's unfortunate because we have a technology that can really help 90% of guys mm -hmm. that come to see us. Okay. And um, for them, it's, it's really it's a game changer. It's very gratifying to do it. And um, if we, we can use oral medicines, we can use shots if necessary. And it just, it upsets me when people come to me and they, um, and this happens all too often, they'll say a man has prostate cancer and they have to get surgery. And a lot of times after that, the plumbing is not gonna work. Mm -hmm. And they've gone back to their physician and they've said, you know, I've had this problem. And they'll be, I'll try the, try the Viagra, mm -hmm. which very, very rarely will help. Mm -hmm. And they'll go back and say that, um, that didn't work. You know, what else you got? And I don't know how many times, the patient has told me, Doc says, well, I got nothing. That's mm -hmm. it. I got nothing. Right. And you're like, y you do have something. Yeah. You may choose not to do it as a physician, which is his prerogative, but don't tell the patient you've got nothing because other people do have something. Right. So I, I'm, I'm a little hot under the collar about this. You know? All right. It's just, it's, it's a fall. I mean, there's a lot of things medicine's falling down on uh -huh. that may not seem like the most important one in the whole you know, world, right. but, it, but it is important, very important to the men that are involved. And, and it's your specialty. And so... Uh, if anyone's got that problem, they well, should come to you. Well, I guess if you. anyone out there in, in, you know, in, in a viewership uh, has this issue and they're not satisfied, by all means, we, there's other things that can be done. Excellent. So before we go, now I need to ask you about this. You are a Kennedy assassination theorist. Yes, don't call me a buff, all right? Okay, yeah. yes, theorist. We, so you've studied uh, the autopsy reports. I, uh, which I think several is very of my friends interesting. have been there and looked at the autopsy materials, and, and um, I've sort of assisted them in the process. Oh, okay. Uh, you've shot up watermelons <laughs> with high-powered rifle to test the theory explaining why Kennedy's uh, head thrust backwards after being shot, if it was shot from the rear, as the, well, okay, as the, the theory deal. goes. The deal, the deal so these are all very interesting things. Louis Alvarez, Nobel Prize laureate from UC Berkeley, mm. When, when they first showed the movie, which was in the Jim Garrison's case back in the 60s, and public was, because the public, it was, as a movie, it was buried. Life Magazine bought the rights. They showed individual clips, but never really showed it as a movie. When people saw the movie, and it appeared in the movie that he's shot from the front, not from where Oswald supposedly was, right. this was a problem. Well, Alvarez came forward and said, look, I, I've got this dialed in. I'm a physicist, you know, I won a Nobel Prize, by the way, and I did some experiments, and if you shoot something this way, there's a jet effect that will blow back that way. So we mm -hmm. thought, fair enough. Mm -hmm. Is that what happens when you do it? So mm -hmm. we went out and shot a bunch of melons up, and that's not what happened. Mm -hmm. So I said, Alvarez is not, you know, I, we can't reproduce his, his evidence. I've also heard the, uh, you know, the theory from, from people who, who are trying to, you know, who say the Os Oswald was a single shooter, that 
it's not only that effect, but, but the con contraction of the muscles. Yeah, except there's no out. evidence for that. If you, if you film, and they've done this, if you film like, if you put a goat out, which they did, and you shoot the animal, they drop to the ground. People do not, mm -hmm. they don't, it's just, it's not true. The yeah. evidence is overwhelming. Uh, and the autopsy evidence. Acoustic evidence, photographic evidence, and really the autopsy evidence when you get right down to it that, you know, that there was, a, there was a, someone shooting from the front. Interesting. And right. I think there's really no doubt, 50 years on, we still don't know. I can't tell you yeah. who the plotters were or exactly why, but I think we have some yeah. pretty, good, pretty good ideas of what was going down. Yeah. And, uh, do you oh, have, did you do any shows on that? Or yes, do you we have did. any? Yes, we did a few. We've had a lot of okay. people. We had Jefferson Morley, Washington Post reporter, who runs the website, really jfkfacts.com, excellent website. Uh, Jefferson Morley came on, talked about that. We've had Dr. Gary Aguilar, who's been to the, who's looked at the autopsy materials several times, and um, if someone wanted to look up those particular shows, are they labeled as, you know, JFK? Um, how would they find? Uh, that's a good question. I think so. <laughs> if, you, if you type in JFK, it'll probably come up. You know? Okay. All right. And some of those are, I think, are worth listening to. So I'm glad that's, you brought that's that up. Like a, an hour show right there, and we, we're running out of time. About, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> something you can't do in two minutes too yeah, well. No, no, no. No. But I thought it was interesting to touch on that, that uh, you are very uh, into that. Uh, so we're, we are winding up. Is there anything else you'd like to say about Radio Parallax or your experiences there? Well, it's just been a great run, this whole experience, starting here 16 years ago and being able to, you know, I, anyone that wants, and people, I am hope that the interest in radio will continue. In, in the internet era, people don't seem as interested as they might be. And uh, I just hope people will, young people will continue to do radio and just ask. You can get great guests if you just simply go ask politely. Yeah. Well, it's a great medium. I, you know, I don't, th I don't think it could ever die out because, for one thing, you know, when you're driving, what are you going to do, right? you got to listen to something. So thank you for All right. coming. Thank you for having me. All right. Very intelligent, Susan, but not smart. You lived your life so much in fantasy that reality never had a chance. I want to be free. 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 I want to be free.